Welcome everyone to Tea Time, where the Olympic medals have been hung around the necks, and we are ready for the playoffs. We got the Wyndham Championship. Welcome to Tea Time. I'm Andy from WagerTalk.com. Being joined, as always, by my fellow meteorologist this week, Nick Borman. <laughs> uh let's just cut right to it because uh if you're not watching the entire video you have to understand the weather that's going to be happening this week it affects the entire tournament it affects the entire betting strategy so nick before we get into the course uh let's talk about the weather what do we do with this thursday and friday it looks like kind of a disastrous uh <laughs> weather weather front coming in it's I mean what i'm going to do personally is be very very weary very cautious this week it's going to be hard to get any sort of, I don't know, get, the, get get these guys in any sort of rhythm that they're normally used to. It's going to be play, stop, play, stop, maybe go. I mean, there might, there's, a, there's a situation we're looking at where they might not play over the course of an entire day. If you're just having steady, heavy rain all day and there's puddled water, you can't play. And if it's not going to stop, it's not going to stop. So I'm very curious to see if they can get 72 holes in and how long that takes. Um, I can't imagine. Can you imagine, like, the decision that has to get made at some point throughout this weekend of, Literally, the playoffs are on the line. You got guys fighting for their lives on that cut line. And then they're like, eh, like they did with, what was it, Pebble? Or whatever Wyndham one where they shut to 54 holes. I don't think you can yep. just do that this week, right? You can't just – I mean, there's going to be guys that are within a shot or two on that 54-hole number if they're even that far. And it's like, how do you make that decision? So I'm very going to be very cautious myself. I have no idea how much golf they're going to get on a Thursday, Friday. It seems to be like sometime as the day goes on Saturday, it might start to lessen up. And then by Sunday – is definitely a golf day, but to get to that point, honestly, I, I'm not sure there's an 18 holes found in those first two and a half, three days. So it's very difficult to bet. Um, it's very difficult to want to, you know, like you, you look at any other term, you're like, yes, this guy's red hot. He's playing great. He's finishing in the top 20, nine out of 10 times. He's going to finish in the top 20. Well, you get these guys a little out of sorts in their head and their rhythm and their usual pre game, pre uh, pre round routine. You know, these guys are, I don't want to, I use the term, um, you know, they're weak mentally. So it's like you get them a little off kilter, a little off course. They kind of don't perform quite the same. So I'm scratching my head as much as the next guy, Andy, but I'm going to be very, very weary about this. And maybe live betting as the week goes on, when you know better how the, um, how the day is going to look and you stick to some round matchups, some round scores, that kind of a thing might be the best way to go this week. So the official weather report, um, you know, some sprinkles on Tuesday and Wednesday, but then starting like right around midnight, it's just going to start raining. 100% chance of rain. Like there's no there's no getting around it. Um, as of now, they're calling for three inches of rain on Thursday. Three inches. Um, yeah, that's not and then that's not-, it's, that's not going away. And then it's just going to continue all through Friday. As of now, it's going to start to die off late Friday night, early Saturday morning. Um, the wind is going to be at its peak on Thursday. So even if they do go out and try and play, it's windy and rainy. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm with you. Caution, caution, caution. Don't put in – I wouldn't put in any bets before Wednesday evening. I'll tell you that. I haven't put in any right. bets now, and that's just kind of what you have to do. You have to protect your bankroll by being very, very careful, and that's my best advice is uh, don't put anything in until Wednesday, if at all. So, well, let's talk a little bit about the course, Sedgefield Country Club. I don't know. I mean, what's this What's this course going to look like this week? It's going to be completely different. Um, it's, you know, uh, it's a par 70, and it's, you know, it's not that – tough it traditionally plays pretty easy i don't think you're gonna get to minus 20 um on this course i would say mid to high maybe i don't know low to mid teens um it's just there's not much to it the fairways are a little bit narrow but with these soft conditions wherever the ball lands it's probably just gonna stick there not gonna get much roll greens are obviously gonna be super soft and saturated so maybe that's a little bit easier if you Get the ball in the fairway. Maybe you have a pretty easy approach shot as you just you, you know you go flag hunting. So the two par fives are pretty short, um, and with these short courses, it's easy. They're all going to be playing in the same weather, so it probably comes down to who's got the best putter. So um, there's a few holes I like. Um, I like hole two. It's 418 yard par four. I love the approach shot on this hole. Everything runs to the right. There's a creek off to the right. That's probably going to be flowing big time <laughs> this week so <laughs> any approach shot that fades to the right is just going to be completely dead it's an easy hole should be birdie or par at worst but anything right is bogey or worse 
Um, yeah, you can see that bridge and just everything slanting off to the right there. So uh, a whole 12, 231 yard par three. I like it because the green's pretty fun. Um, the big defense that this green has is it's got a false front. And it, it, the balls can roll off the front. I don't think you're going to see that happening now. So uh, maybe this hole ends up being a lot easier. So, um, you know, if you land on the wrong tier and, you, you know, a two putt can be pretty difficult, but maybe not this year with the green as saturated as it is. And then I do like the last hole. It's 500 yard par four. This thing's going to be playing really long this week. Uh, drives are going to land just kind of short b- before that big hill. Um, then you got this downhill, you know, lie, this downhill kind of shot leading into this uh, big green. So soft conditions, the hole is tough. The bunkers are going to be a mess. Um, so if you miss a green here, uh, this could make for a pretty, pretty tough um, uh, uh, 18th hole. So, yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at here for uh, for this tournament. But again, weather going to be the big story. Nick, let's take a look at the top 10 total strokes gained. Let's take a look at some of these guys that uh, pop pop in and out um, of uh, pop in and out of the the total strokes gained charts that we got. Uh, so let's take a look at the Wyndham uh, total strokes gained. Yeah, so this list is really very different than we saw last week at the Olympics. Um, we got as far as the twelve month window, we got Sung Jae Im as the best, most consistent player over the last twelve months here in the graphic, followed by. Bazudin Hoyt, Billy Horschel, who was the 54-hole leader at the Open, Shane Lowry, and then Brian Harmon, and then we start to get down to the the next tier. Um, There's a lot of guys that can win this week. Uh, There's a lot of guys, you know, I always put caution into this event because there's there's two things going on. There's winning this event, right? And then there's also, what is this week for most players? Is it a prep week for the playoffs, or is it a we just to try to get into the playoffs, right? So sometimes I don't even look here at the top of this list. I kind of look more towards the 30, 40 range and find those guys that are playing well, but are on the cusp of the top 70. And I kind of focus in on those guys. But in this grouping, um, the, the best players on here are kind of, you know, it's not necessarily these top 10 guys. They are in the last 12 months. But if you look in the shorter term, the last three months, and the notables I threw on here, you got guys like Aaron Rye, you know, who's been really strong. We've talked about him several times over the last month, month and a half, Andy. Uh, Robert McIntyre, obviously just a winner at the Scottish Open, also won earlier this year. So two wins. He had the, it was the Canadian Open, I believe. So those guys are playing hard. They can easily win in this field. Sung Jae Im, I already mentioned, he's the best in both the 12 and three month window. But the last time that guy won was like four years ago at this point. So I don't really trust him to win. And at 14 and one, he's not an outright guy. Plus, like, like we're both talking about, be careful on your pre tournament bets. Uh, Post is somebody we liked a lot, but his short-term trend, as this graphic shows, is not good. He is not playing anywhere near what he was playing uh, six to 12 months ago. And uh, the list from there, you know, this is a week. I've actually dug a little, I guess, deeper into the results uh, so far this year. Because I know know at the top of the graphic, it tells you, you know, since 2022, you know, how many overall PGA Tour winners have been ranked inside this top 10 right but if you kind of look at a, at a different avenue you just kind of look focus in on this year we've had forgetting the five there were five alternate field events and i'm, I'm throwing those out the window because i i tend to focus most of my energy and I, most people will focus around you on the major that week or something else um we've had 31 pga tour events not including those five so 36 total but if you look at the winners in these events these weaker field events the ratio of these top 10 guys winning is a far less than it is at the at the majors and then it is at the um the, the, the signature events so why i'm saying that even though we're looking at this graphic i don't know that this is your end all be all in these type of fields i think it's a good starting point for guys that probably play well but i wouldn't put all my eggs in the basket uh you know jonathan vegas two weeks ago at the 3m open is a perfect example guy hasn't won in years he was 80 to 1 to win he was nowhere near this list in fact he was like 71st at ranking uh but he won and that's what we can kind of get this week so Look at this list, use it as you see fit. I'm looking at it like where I'm trying to decipher guys that are playing well in the shorter term versus the longer term to make sure it's consistent. So Sung Jae Im, if any book gave me a Sung Jae Im versus a JT Poston bet, you know, that's kind of the point of this this, this graphic this week. But um, that's your top 10. Unfortunately, I can't really say I'm putting all my eggs in any one of these baskets because it's just it's so much unknown this week. My hot take is that JT Poston is hurt. Um, yeah. He's been, he's been so bad. Like, it's kind of one of the things, it's it, it's the only thing that makes sense. And I watched him. He was in the feature groups. 
in the last tournament, and I had a bet going on him, which lost profusely because he missed the cut. <laughs> and when I watched him, Nick, he wasn't even close. I mean, he had approaches that were coming up 30, 40 yards short. And I was like, that <laughs> screams there's some kind of injury, you know, going on. That was a very easy course. Of course, he always plays well and he missed the cut. You look at his numbers and they just – they fought, they've been falling off a cliff. So to me, that just screams JT Poston is nursing some kind of injury as we finish out the season. So that's my that's that, that's my hot take uh, on that one. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at some players that can trip you up. A couple of these players appeared on the last graphic, but I'm going to start with Siwoo Kim as my first guy that I think can trip you up. He's priced as a top five guy. I get it. It's a weak field. Uh, but this guy that hasn't finished inside the top five since June of 2023 and he hasn't cracked the top 25 in four straight tournaments uh in the last three months he's only 13th in total strokes gained in this field he finished 33rd here last year and his putting has been awful the last three months minus 0 0.30 in the last three months that is by far the worst for players that are priced in the top tier of this field so it's not a good field it just uh, with this putting and how bad he's been recently and what his price is, there's just no way I can be betting on Siwoo Kim. Um, and you mentioned uh, Sung JM. I will tell you, Nick, I saw in the domestics that they had Sung JM minus 155 against Siwoo Kim. I so want to bet it, but the weather's got me. I'm just like, I can't pull the trigger uh, just yet. But if like they're in the same group or if they're teeing off at the same time and I know that they're just going to play in the exact same conditions. I think I might. I think I might end up getting getting there on that one. So I just don't see a whole lot of upside for Siwoo, and I see a whole lot of downside. Uh, next up, Shane Lowry. He finished sixth at the Open Championship, and Nick, I'm pretty sure that's the most important tournament of the year for him. I mean, you know, it just it, he goes all in for it. The Olympics. That was a classic letdown spot uh, for him. He finished 26 out of what 58 players, 60 players. Uh, I'm just not sure how motivated he's going to be this week. He's tenth. In FedEx Cup point. So this is not a guy that needs like this huge finish to boost his, you know, position. And his last two finishes at this tournament were 51st and 83rd. Like, how motivated is Shane Lowry going to be to play in a gigantic rainstorm for a couple days when he's 10th in FedEx Cup points? He's just coming off the, the Olympics and the Open Championship. I don't know. Uh, I'll be staying away from him, in, him this week. He's priced as a top five guy. I'm not sure what he's going to do to improve uh, and yeah, I just I don't see the motivation for him this week. And finally, we just have to bring him up. He, Nick, he's priced as a top 10 guy. The, the Jordan Spieth, again, is priced as a top 10 guy. He has 12 straight tournaments without a top 25 finish. And I've already seen a couple of the head-to-heads. The books think they're so sneaky. They're not giving us a good matchup in head-to-head -head matchup so we can fade him. But they're going to try and bait us into betting him outright and top 10 and top 20 his putting the last three months is minus 0 0.38 total strokes gain his approach is basically even plus 0 0.05 terrible recipe for a course where you have to get a lot of birdies to compete so uh just because you see the name jordan spieth does not mean you should be putting him in your dfs lineups or bets so siwoo kim shane lowry and jordan spieth are players that can trip you up Let's take a look at an outright winner. Uh, before we do that, though, Nick, real quick, I know you've got a special going on with uh, Kevin Dolan, one of my favorites. I haven't talked to, to <laughs> Dolan in a while. Uh, so uh, tell us what you got going on over at Wager Talk. Yeah, the Irishman and I have uh, paired together. We have the Premier League season kicking off in 10 days, which is crazy to think. So not this weekend, next weekend. Uh, European soccer is back and the Premier League kicks off. So we have the full season, which runs – from next weekend all the way through the end of May of 2025 <laughs> uh, is available for $2.99 for the entire season for both of us. So it's a huge price. It's, it's half price. Normally it's $2.99 per. So 50% off. You get both both of us uh, for that entire span. It includes every play, including 5%. I have a 5% play already loaded up for that opening weekend. So you'll get that immediately. And then, of course, you'll get all plays throughout the whole year. So that's available right now. No promo code needed. It is just it's a standalone package available on my page or Kevin's page uh, at wagertalk.com right now. Love it. Yeah. That, that season of EPL is hilarious, man. It's, you think NHL or NBA season is long. No, 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 no. <laughs> it never like stops. Long. And then there's seasons within <laughs> seasons. Crazy. <Yes. laughs> oh, man. So funny. So, all right. Well, let's take a look at an outright winner. 
Uh, mm-hmm. He's kind of surging at the right minute or the right time. We've seen him do this before, surge late at the end of the season. Uh, who do you like for an outright winner? Yeah, I mean, he's a past FedEx Cup champion, right? Billy Ho. Now, listen, we already cautioned your pre-tournament betting this week, and I'm throwing this out there for those that are very interested in pre-tournament betting, and he's, he is a guy I am watching. I do like how he's playing. Uh, I just wouldn't go really heavy on anything pre-tournament, so be careful here, but if you want to sprinkle a few bucks on an outright, Billy Ho is my recommendation. Listen, he nearly won that his first major. He had that 54-hole lead at the Open Championship, ultimately settled co-runner up. Uh, it's really been a resurgent season for the 37-year-old. He's got nine top 25 finishes, including that win um, at the Puna County Championship back in April, which was very emotional. He really talked about how far he's come back and because he was struggling the last really two seasons pretty poorly. So it is nice to see him back. Uh, he also threw in a tie for eighth at the PGA Championship, a tie for 15th at the Memorial Tournament which showcases his ability to finish high on a leaderboard. Even when you got deep fields, which is not the case this week, he actually ranks number one, Andy, in total strokes gained over the last six months in this field. So that just shows you kind of where he, he sits in, in, in this caliber of players, and, and especially in the short term. And his best part, his best club, it's really thanks to that. It's his putter. He's relied on you know that thing in almost every tournament. And, if, and generally, this tournament is lower scoring. Again, we don't know how it's going to play out this week with the weather, but usually this is going to be a term you're going to have to rely on the putter. <clears throat> That's just one of the converging trends is, is his current form, but you look at the history here, he loves this place. He comes in with five top 11 finishes at this tournament in his last seven starts. That's remarkably good, uh, including a solo fourth last year, as well as a runner-up in 2020. And what I like about his overall skill set, he's, he's accurate enough that he's not going to get into ma- major trouble. He's got an excellent short game. He's lost strokes around the green just one time <clears throat> over his last 15 starts. His putter, like I've mentioned already before, he's lost strokes on the greens just four times all season. And in fact, Horschel has been an excellent putter over his entire career, Andy. He's gained strokes on the greens in 12 straight seasons. So the guy can putt. And I think, it, again, I'm assuming that because of the rain and how it's going to come into play where it's just going to like wash out a day, it's not like it's going to be, they're going to go out there, play a couple, come off, play a couple. I just don't think they're going to be able to course playable. I'm hoping that just like he's going to end up playing when it's like the whole tournament's going to end up playing out when the conditions are allowing to do so, meaning hopefully it plays standard and then the scores are low and you're going to have to rely on this putter. And I think he's just got that advantage over a lot of guys. And I don't know if you've watched him putt. Don't. Because if you're a golfer yourself and you watch that guy fidget and putt, it's oh, it's maddening. But ball goes in, so can't really argue with the result. It just the process is a little uh, <laughs> overwhelming to watch. So, but Billy, how do you think we'll have a good week? Uh, and it's going to be on the, on the heels of his putter for sure. Yeah, I mean, to say he was struggling the last couple of years. I mean, last year at the end of the season, he was in tears doing it, yes. doing it at the podium, doing an interview. That's yes. how bad it was for him. So he's an easy guy to root for. I, I've. I've told the story. Um, that, uh, well, I, I I went to a couple of the the majors out in New York. I got a buddy that lives out there. I've told the story about how uh, we we had a bet on Jason Kokrak versus Cameron Champ, and so we were following them around. And there were some women that were following, and so we started chatting them up. And it was Cameron Champ's mom and sister and, and girlfriend. And we just didn't have the heart to say we were following them because we were rooting against their son and their brother. Uh, but uh, at that at that same tournament, we followed uh, the group that Billy Horschel was in. Probably the nicest golfer I followed ever. Interacting awesome. with the crowd like every single time. And you don't see that really on camera. So it was kind of cool. Um, like, you know, he made this really nice putt. And someone was like, Nice putt, Billy. And he turned around. I was like, "Yeah, I thought it was gonna break more, but like it was. I don't know. It was pretty cool." What is that? Mean? Um, so that is cool. yeah, yeah. So I'm also I'm also a pretty big fan. Also, um, the, completely random, out of nowhere, Nick. Did you see Liv release their potential uh, um, schedule for next year? And one of the places they may play is ten miles away from my house. I'm so going. I'm going to live wow. next year. <laughs> Wow, yes. that's that's yes. great. You, I think, it I feel like you like, wanted to go. To one. I feel like I you have get to, to now. I just have to experience yeah. it. I have to yeah. see what it's all about. So, um, there Agreed. actually might draw a pretty decent crowd. That's something goofy enough that people in Indianapolis would go to, uh, just for the just for the spectacle. So, yes, <laughs> you maybe maybe see me at live. So, uh, all right, let's do some uh, DraftKings darlings here. Uh, we have. It's kind of one of those tournaments where 
everyone's a DraftKings darlings, but I think we can find some value here. I'll start with <laughs> Harry Hall at 7,100. Uh, guys in really good uh, form, like short form, just in the last five events, made cuts in all five of those, including the win at the ISCO Championship. So just going to roll with him to make the cut, get us weekend points here one more time. My only worry is the accuracy off the tee. With the rain, as long as it just lands in the fairway, I think it's going to stick there. Uh, rest of his stats are really good over the last three months. So Harry Hall is how I'll start off uh, my my DraftKings lineups with. Mackenzie Hughes at 7,400. I think this might be the steal of DFS this week. So Hughes has four missed cuts this entire season. Three of them were the U.S. Open, PGA Championship, and the Memorial. As you know, Nick, those are three of the best fields that you're going to see all year. In tournaments with weak fields, he's got some real upside. Um, seventh at the Canadian Open, sixth at the Wells Fargo, third at the Valspar, and he just finished 16th at the Open Championship and 19th at the 3M. Those are his last two tournaments. So I think 7,400 could end up looking like a steal uh, with a weak field where Mackenzie Hughes seems to do uh, pretty good. And then finally, 7,600. Had my eye on this guy uh, for a little bit. Uh, Max Grazerman, quite the run. His last six finishes are 21st, 31st, 26th, 21st, 13th, and 2nd. Putting has been crazy good. The last three months, plus 0.58 strokes gain. He should be able to hit greens in regulation. A guy with a hot putter at 7,600 is uh, where I will uh, be focusing my third DraftKings darling. The rest of the lineup is up over at wagertalk.com. Got a free article on my profile page. Uh, do a free golf article every week. Nick does one as well. So if you want to go to uh, wt.buzz slash al or just go to the news tab on wagertalk.com, you can grab all those articles. We're running a great special at Wager Talk. It is by two months. Get August for free. So you're basically getting a 33% discount on all plays, including golf, including 5% plays, including everything. We've got a ton of specials in August, but really the one is the uh, by, by, uh, by two months, get August for free. Uh, Nick, we're having a great year. Up plus 100 units so far in 2024. Plus 100.8. Wow. So I'm sure I'm going to, yes, yeah, so I think I'm going to lose one unit and then like <laughs> I get to brag about passing a hundred units again, uh, and again. <laughs> just flip flop. Yeah. Flip flop, you know, multiple times. So uh, 2024 has just been a, uh, it's been an amazing year. Um, so you can grab three months and we're starting to creep into NFL college football season Went 13 and four in college football had a great start to the NFL season last year. So it's a great time to jump on board. Uh, we only had 11 plays total last week. We brought in 14 units and we have a 5% UFC play that is up. That is included in that. So uh, don't waste any time. Um, the, the soon as you lock in that special, you start getting plays for the month of August. So there's no time to wait. Uh, you get August and then you get the next two months for one price over at wagertalk.com. Let's take a look at a finishing position here. Nick, you got your eyes on a uh, guy top 20 at two to one. Who do you like this week? Yeah, uh, Bazudenhoit ranks pretty highly in this field as far as guys that are in good form. And speaking of, you know, I was bragging about Billy Ho's good putter. Bazudenhoit, kind of exactly the same over his career. He's gained strokes putting on all seven seasons he's played between the DP World Tour and now that he's a regular member on the PGA Tour. He's also gained strokes around the greens all seven years. And he's gained strokes on approach in each of the last five seasons. And I'm talking about the full season body of work. His real only weakness over all of that time and why you probably haven't heard about him a lot is off the tee. He's lost strokes each of his first six seasons, so he gets himself in a little bit of trouble, can't always overcome it. But he made a concerted effort this past offseason to improve in that department. And while it's not a big number as far as where he, what it is, he's plus strokes for the first time in his career off the tee. Now, there's a couple tournaments left to screw that up, but plus .07 strokes gained off the tee is a huge improvement just from last year where he was minus 0.34. So he's gained almost a half a shot per round off the tee. And while, you know, in any small sample size, that doesn't sound like a lot, it, it is a lot over, over when you're talking about finding, or excuse me, these fine margins between these PGA Tour players. This is huge. And for him to really put his effort on the weakest part of his game, I think it's clearly shown in his results this year, which have been much more consistent than at any other point in his career. If you go back to last fall, He's finished inside the top 25 in 15 of his last 25 starts, so 60% of the time. His worry for me, I guess, a little bit this week, and this is kind of an overall thing, is that he, he's making the long trip 
from France playing in the Olympics last week to North Carolina. He, he played well there, respectable 16th place finish. At first, I'm looking at this tournament like, eh, I hate that travels. We talked about that when they were going over to play the Scottish in the Open. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot for the body. To, it's five hours different. So it's, it's, it's a lot in a three-day window trying to turn around from Sunday to get ready for Thursday. But with this week and maybe things are getting delayed, maybe they have a little bit more time to adapt to that. I don't really know, but it is something I wanted to mention just because it's it's true. We did play in the Olympics. A lot of it. There's only about, I think it's either 18 or 19 players in this field that did play in there. So keep that in the back of your mind for whatever that's worth. But his overall weakness is now a strength for him. And he's playing very, very consistent all year all year uh, long. The only other concern is that he's, he's played three times here. Uh, his best finish is a tie for 37th. But again, probably not the same Bazudenhoit that we saw in years past as we're seeing this year. So I do think there's value in his number this week. I think he should be higher ranked. I mean, he's 35 to 1 on the outright market. And you got a guy like Sung Jayim who hasn't won at all you know, in, in four years at 14 to 1. I don't know why there should be that much of a separation between the two, to be honest. Maybe a little bit, but not that much. So I just think he provides pretty good value on the number, whichever way you kind of look at him. Um, and maybe save if you want to save for matchups or things like that as the week goes on. That's cool, too. But I think Christian Bazunhoit at 2 to 1 for a top 20. It's a pretty good bet this week. Love it. Um, if you want to comment and tell us how to pronounce Christian Bazadenhoit's name in the comments, please do. I know some... <laughs> I know... Yeah, we had a good one last week. Somebody, two weeks ago. So somebody <laughs> comment on the way that on the way that I that I said his name. So I went to YouTube and I just searched pronunciation. I can find four videos of completely different pronunciations. So <laughs> until I get like until I get something like in cement until on all the him podcasts, and right? ask him. <laughs> yes. Yes, I've only done that one time. I asked Emiliano Grillo, uh, how how okay. is his name Grillo or Grillo? And and his caddy his caddy turned and said Grillo. I was like, oh wow, how hard was that? Yeah, how hard yeah. how hard was that? <laughs> so and that's actually a good question because he's Argentinian, right? And that's Spanish, so they do usually pronounce those double Y's as their double L's as Y. So good question. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, leave the leave us a comment section. Hit the like button and leave us a comment about our pronunciations <laughs> of the of the tournament. So, um, all right. So we got the Wyndham this week, and then uh, I gotta I, I I gotta say I know Wyndham Clark doesn't want to play this week, but come on, come on. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. How could you? How 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 has Wyndham? How's Wyndham Clark and the and the Wyndham franchise not gotten together and done a promotion on? Everybody wins if Wyndham wins the Wyndham. Like, there's got to be, <laughs> like, it's the most obvious <laughs> promotion on the PGA Tour. How did they miss this one? I And it I really think Wyndham Clark, you know, he the Open Championship and the Olympics and, you know, probably not that much interest. But, man, what a missed, like, like I just, I feel like you got to do it. I feel like you got to do something uh, with him. Uh, if if Wyndham Clark wins the Wyndham, whatever. <laughs> All right. Uh, my next mine and Nick's plays are at wagertalk.com. Go and hit the like button if you have not already, and subscribe to the Wager Talk YouTube channel. It's college football and NFL season. It's right around the corner, and we're already getting preview videos for season win totals, divisions, uh, player props for the the next season. That is up in EPL. Unbelievable, right around the corner. So go ahead and check out uh, Nick's profile page to get locked in. Um, he's doing a special with Irishman Kevin Dolan. So go ahead and check all of that out at wagertalk.com. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And it's getting ready for the golf playoffs. We'll see everyone next week on Tea Time.